Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to take a look at the Four Horsemen repaint of the Hitless Horseman Figura Obscura released from last year. This time it is released in a different colorway that I think looks more interesting than the one from last year. As usual, please like, share, comment, subscribe, or even hit the super thanks button. I do appreciate all engagement on my channel. This one's coming out just after Halloween this year, and I also got it really quick from my friendly neighborhood store Robo Robo, so shout out to him. With a different color scheme, the box art is also changed slightly to reflect the new colors. Compared to the old figure, this one's box has the same design, this time with a flat or matte finish compared to the glossy one of the original. And of course now there's more greens and purples in the box art. Just like the original as well, this one comes with a magnetic cover that you can pull off from the side and the front to reveal the figure behind. The magnetic cover is also really nicely designed. I do like all the green flames coming out of that really bright orange hit and the description of the character over here. And there's also a nice bit of rough texture on the flame effects. On the inside of the cover, there's artwork of Sleepy Hollow. This time also revised to have a little bit more green. And I do like the illustration and the art style. Really creepy and cool at the same time. A quick look at the box and it's got the horse and the horseman along with all these accessories displayed clearly in that window. Up top we have that four horseman logo cut out. The box also has a really nice purple and green color scheme all the way around. And on the back, very eye-catching green flames contrasting against the purple background. Fantastic recoloring of the same artwork from last year. So now, let's go ahead and get the figure open. First time we're taking a look at the horse, it is mostly painted in black with a very nice, consistent matte finish all over. There are subtle hits of colors here and there that really bring out the uniqueness of this horse and we'll take a closer look at these details as we zoom into different parts. The head sculpt is great, the nostrils are flaring and his mouth is open, looking like a really angry stallion. Teeth and mouth are nicely painted. The head is also accessorized with a harness painted in the dark brown with nice hits of silver paint at the buckles and attachments. What really brings the attention to this head sculpt is the green of those eyes. The bright green really draws your attention and it's nicely emphasized by a darker shade of green outlining the eyes. The hair on the top of his head and the back of his neck also has a subtle green wash and this nicely brings out the textures. You can swap this hair piece out and put in the separate accessory piece that also comes in this set. And likewise, this separate hair piece also has that same green dry brushing technique, bringing out the textures once more and looks really good flailing in the wind as you pose this horse in an action stance. The horse is also decorated with a lot of nice accessories. Everything over here is painted mostly with dark brown for all the leather straps and likewise with hits of silver for the buckles and metallic parts. The horse's skin is also nicely textured with nice definition for the muscles and you can sometimes even see a bit of vein detail also sculpted in. The saddle also is sculpted with a nice leathery texture, a very dark grey paint for this saddle and it nicely contrasts with the black colour of the horse's skin. There's also a sort of greyish purple paint that's used for the rest of the saddle that goes along the midsection of the horse. And up top over here, once more, an even lighter shade of grey for a canvas sheet that's nicely rolled up on the back of the saddle. The horse also has a nice slush tail, black paint for most of it, and likewise that same nice green dry brushing to bring out the textures in those strands of hair. And finally, I also like how the hooves have the bright green deco that we saw, similarly to his eyes. Green dry brushing once again for the hair just above the his hooves, and that nicely fades into the much brighter green at the bottom. So overall, as you can see, I do really like the dark color scheme for this horse. Subtle paint details on the saddle and straps, but the green really bringing out some of the features like its supernatural powers being the steed of the Hitless Horseman. Now let's have a look at the accessories that come with the Hitless Horseman. He's got a fabric cape with black on the outside, accessorized with some clasps at the top. This is a dark metallic color, looking like it's tarnished, along with a real chain at the front. On the inside of the cape is a nice bright orange that goes along with the pumpkins on his heads. This cape is also has a poseable wire so you can bend it and pose it as you wish. However, I do wish that 
The wire could have been a little stronger and more rigid so it could hold poses better, but otherwise it mostly works as intended. To install the cape you have to first pop his head off, then remove this attachment. This collar piece pegs into a little slot on the back of his neck. And now you can put the chain properly around his neck, sitting just below the collar, popping his head back on and also adding a couple of bands and making that cape look like it's falling more naturally or even kind of moving in the wind. And I think that he looks fantastic with this postable cape. The orange might be a little bright and look a kind of comical, but I really am all for it, considering he's now coming with a pumpkin head, commemorating Halloween. So it's really fun to have a headless horseman who doesn't take himself too seriously. For alternate hand options, he's got one left alternate relaxed hand, and this one is meant to go with the right on the figure by default. All the hands are painted in the dark purple, just like the rest of his outfit, but it also has a couple of nice hits of silver on the back to show the rivets in his armor plating. And besides the relaxed hands, he also gets a full set of gripping hands. These are articulated and they go up and down, so these are great for wielding swords. And this is in contrast to the left gripping hand on the figure, and this one articulates in and out. From gripping hands, we look at his only weapon, which is a standard Mythic Legion sword, painted with a nice shiny silver for the blade, darker metal for the rest of the hilt with black in the middle. He holds on to his sword just fine in any of his gripping hands. And I think the sword can also go into this holder on his belt. And you can also conveniently store the sword on the harness with the horse, whether in front or at the back. He also comes with this alternate right hand that has a peg on it. And I'll touch a little more on how we're going to use this in a bit. Next time he's also got an alternate neck attachment. This one is mostly painted in white to match his collar of his inner shirt. But it also has some pink paint to show the grisly details of that muscle from having his head locked off, with also the off-white paint here for the bone of his spine. It's easy enough to swap off, just pull off his head with his neck, and insert this alternate neck piece on top, snapping into place firmly, and it's, it's a nice bit of grisly detail. And now with his head popped off, we can pop on that right hand with that neck peg, and fit his pumpkin head onto that ball peg. It is a very snug fit and he can now hold on to his pumpkin head like so. This alternate hand was a bit loose on the previous Figura Obscura release. However, this time, I think the four horsemen have probably thickened that peg a little bit so it doesn't swing around anymore and he can hold his big heavy pumpkin head at different angles as you please. This brings me to his last and most impressive accessory, which is his alternate pumpkin head. They do look to be in the same sculpted form with the grain and texture for the pumpkin and the stalk at the top. Even the shape of the eyes and the mouth is the same. However, as you can tell, this one has more light green paint on the mouth area to kind of show how it's glowing, but also translucent green plastic attachments for the flames that's popping out of his eyes. Even this flame attachment has that darker green paint at the top of the flame to show how that flame kind of changes its color as it burns. Likewise, this gigantic flame attachment on the back of the head is super cool, really capturing all the licks in the flame. And once again, nicely painted with a darker green at the tips of the flame. You can believably see how this flame is glowing brighter at the bottom and then fading out at the top. So the overall effect is fantastic. I really love these two head sculpts and really add so much character to this special figure. Finally, this flame attachment is also nicely packed into the back and you can easily remove it if you just want to have a more subtle glow, just a bit of flames coming out of his eyes without all that gigantic the flame effects coming out at the back. He leaves a little hole, but I think it's a small sacrifice because it's on the back of the figure. This flaming pumpkin head is a snug fit on the neck peg and looks fantastic on the figure. We can fit that flaming pumpkin head onto that hand, so we have him posed over here throwing that flaming pumpkin head at his enemies. I only realized this after turning off my recording. All the green paint on the figures are actually glow in the dark. So that means the flames on the pumpkin heads and the green dry brushing on the horse's hair and hooves all glow in the dark which is an amazing feature. Okay so now we're gonna take a look at the painted and sculpted details on the figure. 
overall he's got a purple and black color scheme with several shades of purple all over the figure. And I think this color scheme along with the greens and the orange of the pumpkin make this figure look more eye-catching than the original release that was mostly in black. I love how the different shades of purple are applied all over the figure. Mostly we have that dark shade of purple. We see that on his high collar, most of his armor, and on his gloves. There's a bit of white for that inner shirt collar over here, and I do like how this lighter shade of purple is used for his tie. The silver paint that's used for all the buckles, like for these straps on the front of his armor and on his belt buckle. This silver paint does have a little hue of purple, and nicely brings out all that riveting detail all over his armor plates. His belt is a separate piece, mostly also painted in black, but now it also has that same lighter shade of purple for these little pouches on the side. And interestingly enough, there's brown for this other pouch on the back. And this brown also has a bit of black wash on it. I like how even though this skirt piece that sits on his waist, very much in the modular style of attaching and swapping armor plates on Mythic Legions, somehow manages to look like one uniform piece of armor put over his body from his torso that goes all the way down to the top of his thighs. So fantastic work there. I'd also like to comment on the wash all over this figure. Definitely adds a lot of depth and you can see the textures even on the rough fabric on his arms. This wash is a light grey wash on black painted arms and likewise the wash on his gloves brings out the weathering and textures just as nicely. There's the same treatment for the blacks of his pants and here we see the shiny silver paint with the purple hue for the armor on his shins. Really a very nice shine and very eye catching. And we end off with once again dark purple for the shoes with also a bit of black wash. The back of the figure is also just as nicely painted. Fantastic work for all the detail even on the back of the boots as well. We have Mythic Legion standard articulation which is a ball joint at the top of the neck and a swivel at the bottom so you can turn his head 360 getting some nice bit of sideways tilting. He looks down just that little bit and up about that much. Swivel hinge at the shoulders so he goes forward and backward and goes out quite a decent bit just about 90 degrees. Swivel and a hinge at the elbow so it bends about 90 degrees, slightly hindered by that bulky scalp of his gloves and also spins out and in. Swivel hinge at the wrist so it goes 360 and this one bends in and out. Ball jointed waist that gives you a little bit of sideways tilt. He does go forward that much as well as backwards and also that 360 spin around. Swivel hinge at the hips, so no problems forward and backward. The armor ha has slits nicely on the front and the back to allow the range in his hips. And also, he's able to do almost a full sideways split, which is fantastic for a guy in armor. Swivel at the thigh that goes out and in. Swivel hinge at the knees, so it bends about 90 degrees, which is just fine for a guy in armor. And that swivel is just above the hinge, so you can turn his calves out and in. I do like that we also have a swivel just above his foot, so out and in. Ankle tilt that goes up that much and down. And finally, ankle pivot that works really well. Now we're going to take a look at the horse's articulation. He's got a swivel peg at the top that goes into a ball joint at the top of the neck and another ball joint at the bottom of the neck. So you do get just quite limited turning, not really getting that much turning in that head when you combine them together. I don't want to move it too far because it should pop out now, but you do get some decent bit of range bending his head down and as well as up. The joints on the horse's front legs are all hinge swivels, so you do get that much forward range at the top of the leg. It does spin out and in. Same thing over here. This is where it is straightened out and gets that much range going backward. Not too bad. And this one also swivels in and out. Finally at the ankle just above the hoof, it goes up that much and down pretty nicely with quite a limited swivel just above the hoof. And here we are at the hind legs. It's got a ball joint over here so that gets you quite a bit of good range backward forward that much and it does have a little bit of outward movement and just like the front legs it's all hinge swivels all the way down over here 
getting a good bit of range bending that much. The swivel is a little tight going out and in. The hinge over here lets you straighten it out that much and also bending forward quite a good bit with that swivel in and out. And finally we have it the same at the ankles going just up that much and down quite a good bit and a swivel in the ankle as well. And finally for that tail we have a swivel hinge so it spins all the way around and that hinge allows you to articulate it up and down. You can hear a little bit of squeaking in that hinge. Both figures are quite decently articulated and I'm quite pleased to be able to get the headless horseman rearing his steed, of course with the help of a flight stand to keep it up. For size, the horseman stands at about 7 inches and that's about 18 centimeters. The horse stands at about 8 and a quarter inches and that's about 21 centimeters. And about 9 inches from its head to its butt, that's about 23 centimeters. Or about 10 inches including its tail, which is about 26 centimeters. For size comparisons, here they are with another Mythic Legions character and also a dragon from the Storm Collectibles Golden Axe line which I do like to mix around with my Mythic Legions. And just for fun, here they both are mounted on their steeds. Of course, here they are with Cosmic Legions, which is the Four Horsemen's latest toy line. And for comparisons with commercial toy lines, here they are with Marvel Legends. This is yet another brilliant release from the Four Horsemen Studios. I thought the original Headless Horseman Figura Obscura release was cool, but just felt a little bit too dull looking for me. Personally, I'm glad I held out for the more colorful general release. While I do wish he had a matching left hand to hold on to his pumpkin head, the ghoulish greens, purples and orange on this one's color scheme sold me from the first reveal. And overall, I'm pleased to have finally received my pre-order. I can recommend this set to you and he look great among the other evil mythic legions. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below, subscribe to my channel or even hit that super thanks button. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.